In this video, I'm going to show an example of how to linearize some data, and here is the data, using a technique called logarithmic curve fitting. Now, the point of logarithmic curve fitting is to find an equation that relates d, the dependent variable, and i, the independent. For example, we were, we're looking for something like this. d equals, I don't know, 5.2i raised to the, let's say, 1.543 power. We're looking for an equation, something like this, an equation that has d and i that we could use to calculate values of d if we're given some value of i. Now, we're not going to come up with this equation. We're not going to derive this equation from theory. That's what we used to do in old experiments in uh, an earlier science class. In this advanced science class, we're going to actually come up with this equation from the data. We're deriving it from data, not from theory. Right? But it's not that one, so I'm erasing it. When we use logarithmic curve fitting, we test for two kinds of relations. We test for either a power relation or an exponential. Right. This is the equation for power relation. Here it is for exponential. k and n are constants. And what we do is we create a log-log graph to test for the power relation. Because if a log-log graph makes a straight line, then we know we have a power relation. On the other hand, if it doesn't make a straight line, we produce a semi-log graph. And if that produces a straight line, then we know our data follows this exponential relation. Right? So imagine I do this experiment, and I collect this data. And the experiment is I lie in my backyard at night. I put 10 stand-up lamps, excuse me, 10 uh, floor lamps around me. And they're all on. And one at a time, I turn one lamp off. And after turning off each lamp, it's nighttime, right? I count how many stars I can see. So with just one lamp off, I can only count one star. When I've turned off a total of two lamps, I count four. With one more lamp turned off, so that there's three total turned off, I count 12. And when I turn off all of the lamps, all 10, so that there are none on, I, and I'm a really good star counter, I count almost 33,000 stars. So I've had a lot of practice. Didn't have a very exciting childhood. Uh, <clears throat> OK, so there's the data. We want to find what's the relationship between the independent variable, the number of lights turned off, and d, the number of stars I count. So the first step is just to produce a graph of regular old dependent against independent, d on the y, i on the x. So I go over to insert, scatter plot. I don't have any data, so I have to add some. I go up to Design, and I click Select Data. Now if I click off of my chart, right now my chart is selected. If I click over here, that those tabs that I need disappear. So you have to click here, then click Design, Select Data. A data series is just a set of XY pairs. Right? So here's a pair, here's an XY pair. This is my set of XY pairs. I only have one series. There's only one set of pairs. So I'm only going to have one series here. If you have extra series here, if you have lots of series, you just highlight all of them and remove them all, and then add the one that we need. So series name, that's just what they want to put in the legend. I'm going to delete the legend, because I don't really care about a legend. So I'm not, I'm not going to fill anything in here. X values, I click here, then I select my X values. I click and drag on the Excel sheet to select the x values. Y values, you have to delete the one that's in there. It automatically fills it in with this. You have to delete it before you go to click and drag. Otherwise, you run into problems. Hit OK, and hit OK. There's my one series. That's what I want to see. I want to see just a single series right here. If you have lots of series, that's a problem. Delete those, and then re-add, add it again. So I don't care about the legend. <coughs> Oh, oh my, look at what we have here. This sure looks like a exponential relation, right? I kind of know what exponential relations look like, and I'm starting to suspect that I won't get a straight line from my log-log graph. I think I'm going to get a straight line from this graph, the semi-log graph. 
just because I suspect that that's exponential. But we're going to make both for the sake of exercise. <clears throat> okay, I want to add some chart titles. Uh, I'm not going to put a title, uh, but I am going to put my axis titles. So I go over to layout, chart title, that's not what I'm going to do. I want axis titles. And I'm going to do a rotated vertical title. Control A, this is just D. I click, Control A, select all. That's my independent. And there we go. We are off and running. Now, if I'm going to make a log log graph, my graph has to have some values that it refers to. So I need to create log i. I need log i values, which I'm going to put here. And my graph will refer to those values. And I need log d, so that my graph has some numbers to refer to. Now, I'm lazy, right? And if I go and pl uh, plug in log i, oh, my formatting isn't copied over. That makes me sad. I don't want to have to click center, right? Oh, I just clicked the wrong button. This is annoying. I just want my formatting to be there. So what I do instead, highlight these cells, copy, paste, then hit delete, not backspace, but delete. Because my formatting is now copied. Whoops. My formatting is copied, right? So I'm just going to replace this with log i and log d. I want this cell to be log of this number. This cell is log of that number, and so forth. So I do equals log. The log is a function in Excel. Every function in Excel has to have parentheses. The stuff inside the parentheses, whoops, the stuff inside the parentheses is called the argument. The argument consists of parameters. Lots of terminology here. Now Excel wants uh, the, this argument, the log, uh, sorry, this function, the log function, expects two parameters, the number and the base. But if you just choose the number and don't plug in the base, it assumes base 10. That's okay. That's what we want. So hit enter. Now if I copy and paste this down low, look at what happens. This equation refers to the cell that's two to its left. This equation does the same thing. It refers to the cell two to the left. So if I copy this all the way, oh, if I copy this all the way down, so I hit Control C, Shift click to highlight, Control V. For every one of these cells, it's referring to the cell two over. Every equation refers to the cell two over. Well, if that's the case, I can just copy and paste because I want this equation in this cell to refer to the log of this number, right? Kind of tricky. So I'm just going to copy, and then I hit Shift, click, Control V. So there's the data that I'll use when I create my log and semi-log graphs. So to create my log graph, I need another chart. I don't want to go through the painful process of selecting data, adding series, that whole thing. So I just click on this white space, right? Click on the white space, not over here, not this white space, or else I get in trouble. I click on this white space, I drag, so I'm holding down on my mouse. Now, with this still dragged, I hit Control. And then I let go over here with Control still down. And that produces a copy, right? Uh, I'm going to make this my log log graph. I can change the data that I'm referring to by clicking on a data point and then moving the X range, which is in purple, and moving the Y range, which is in blue. And this is not a straight line. My log log graph is not a straight line. I don't have a power relation. That's what I've learned. So let's create another graph. So I click, I'm dragging, I hit control. And here's another cool trick. If you hit shift and hold that down as well, now I can only move horizontally or vertically. Right? If I come over here and I let go of shift, then I can move around again. So this lets me align my graphs easily. And I'm going to change this to a log D versus I graph. So I've corrected my title. Now I come over here, and I change this to simply I. And it's a straight line. Wonderful news. Let's delete these. It's a straight line. That tells me my data follows an exponential relation. 
we want to define this relation. We want to find the value of k and the value of n. So we can write down the equation. So you right click, add trend line. This pops up and it shows the trend line. All you choose is display equation on chart. It should be linear. You don't choose to set the intercept. Don't do that. Don't worry about the r-squared value. It doesn't really matter. You move this over, and let's write down our value of m, the slope, and b. Oh, it used that nice, lovely uh, formatting. So I'm going to copy, paste, change that to m. m is simply 0.4914. b, what I put here, is negative this. It's negative because that value is subtracted. Right? Now, there's the values of m and b. What I need is a k and an n. But I can find k and n. Oh, my formatting didn't come through. k and n. I can find those using these equations. n. Uh, let's do k. k equals, whoops, let me do k and n and k, so I have it there. n equals 10 raised to m. And I'm going to have the same thing down here. right? I'm going to have 10 raised to the number that's two cells up. k equals 10 to the b. So I copy and paste. And there are my values. Here's my equation. I have a, an equation here. I say d equals 3.1, and I'm just going to round to 3.1, times this value, n, which is, oops, excuse me, what do I have here? I have, I have uh, d equals k, which is 0.4, times n, 3.1, raised to i. There's my lovely equation. I'm going to finally, the last thing is I'm going to test this equation, right? If this equation is true, if this is correct, then what is proportional to what? Well, d is proportional to 3.1 raised to the i, right? They're related by this constant, 0.4. So if I make a graph which has d and 3.1 to the, sorry, yeah, 3.1 to the i, Right, d on the y and 3.1 to the i on the x, that should make a straight line whose slope is 0.4. So let's test my relation. I need a column. Right here. Let me, let me show you. I'm going to make another graph, and I'm going to change this to simply values of d. These will be 3.1 raised to the i. Right. And well, I need values of d as my y quantity. And I need 3.1 to the i. I don't have 3.1 to the i, so I'm going to move this over here, and I'm just going to add those values in. I'm going to generate those values next. Right? So this is going to be a column which contains values of 3.1 to the i. Equals 3.1. This cell is 3.1 raised to this i value. The next cell is 3.1 raised to this i value, and so forth. So I copy, shift click, paste. Whoa! Look at that. I didn't even take my trend line, my, uh, my equation for the line of best fit off. But I didn't need to. This line, this beautifully straight line, confirms my equation. Right? It confirms that. This is basically 0. 1 times 10 to the negative 12, that might as well be 0. And look at my slope. It's 0.4. So yes, the y quantity, d, is equal to 0.4 times the x quantity, 3.1 to the i. There it is. The last thing we can do, you look at this and you see that 0.4, right? 0.4 must have units that are the same as d. Because this, 3.1 raised to some power, 3.1 is unitless. Right? So 0.4 has the same units as d. So I could then change the units appropriately. So that's logarithmic curve fitting. That's how it works.